could be typical. Welcome to a fairly rainy Kintbury. It's about two hours from London. I am due to be meeting a guy here called Stephen the Vegan, who reached out to me on Instagram and he lives on a barge and I've not been on a barge. Hopefully he'll be here. See if we can find something to stick on eBay, learn a bit about boat life. And also we're going on a kayaking adventure in May from the source of the Thames to France. So hoping I might be able to get him involved or at least learn something about the waterways. Wow, it looks cool. We could take a break from this pipe dream. As ever this year, I know very little more than you do. We've just exchanged some Instagram messages and I've turned up. You could be Stephen the vegan. <laughs> yeah, good, thanks. You don't mind if I film everything, do you? No, not so. Okay, good to meet you, mate. Nice yeah. to meet you. Yeah, yeah. It's so strange because obviously seeing your videos over the last couple of years. Yeah, cool. And then meeting you in person, it's... um. So strange because I know a lot about you, but you know nothing about me. Oh, so. I'm about to learn a bit more. Well, should we come along? <laughs> yeah, please. Welcome to Kimbury. Thank you. I Hi. wonder who on earth manages these raised beds? Um, they're community. Oh, okay. Um, oh, so boat life community. Yeah, yeah. So ah. anyone can just sort of dip them in the canal and just water them and keep them topped up. I mean, I know nothing about boat life at this moment. Okay. I'm beginning to get the vibe for what it's like around here. Boat life communities. You've got. Youngsters like myself and Sophie, who you'll meet. Are there many of you younger guys? Uh, yeah, it's a surprising amount, actually. Are there many minted people in boat life? There's mu much more people um, that are probably broke than minted. <laughs> um, I mean, that is a beast. That yeah. is an absolute palace. Uh, and there's some people who own boats and houses and just go yeah. out on them for like holidays and stuff. The canals are managed by the Canal and River Trust, who recently became a charity. Oh, I like this. Have a boat. And, have um, a getaway vehicle. It's quite an open-minded community, I'd say. I love the idea of the Corco community and the fact that, you know, you have got people all over the place who can, um, you know, you can visit or you know, be creative with. But things go wrong on boats quite often, you know. Yeah. It's not, um, it's not an easy life. Hi there. Hi there. Yeah. It's yeah. great. It's yeah. not an easy life. No, it's not. Um, it, it seems quite tranquil in, in the summer mm -hmm. and... But in the winter, it's quite brutal. Quite cool then, yeah. <laughs> How deep in are you? Um, six months. So was this kind of lifestyle in your family at all before you did it? Not at all. Bit of a dream, really. I was looking around sort of tiny houses and things like that and wanted to try and see how I could do something like that. Buying land is obviously very difficult in, yeah. in the UK. Your yacht, that's a great little boat. So Look at your boat. It's on the smaller side of the boats, <laughs> but it's just me living what, on it. So. What a great little hut. Look at this, guys. Martha. Do you call her Martha? Yeah, I do. Yeah. What a beaut she is. And did you get her in this kind of condition? Pretty much, yeah. She was really looked, really well looked after oh by my the gosh. I bought. Put us in the picture. What kind of money are we talking? It was put online for about 25k. Um, it was actually valued at... 30k but i um managed to sort of get in there quickly and and purchased it for 20 20, 20. yeah all right so yeah we are talking kind of hot money here alleviate the prisons of mine appreciate the wisdom we find the right. everyone believes we're behind sideways or backwards that's a bit of a reverse parking job Okay. Okay, I'm in. Inside, obviously, we've got the, the bed with, you know, storage everywhere, really. We've got Going through here. And then into the bathroom. It's got a shower. That is tidy. That is really yeah. nice. Oh, that's my favourite part of the boat, really. Oh, sweet. And that was one of this... the things that attracted me, really. Really, the log burner, yeah. yeah. I wanted, to, I wanted a, a fire in my, yeah. in my house. There's something special about it, isn't there? Ooh, I just felt the wobble. Yeah. Whoa, that is a weird feeling, guys, because you obviously, I think I'm in a hut, but I'm actually on the water. This is Sophie. Oh, hi, hey. Sophie. Hello. I'm Dave. This is my next door neighbour. Nice, nice to, meet to meet you. How are you doing? Yeah, good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, very good. good very good. good. No two boats are the same. Okay. Uh, that's, no. that's one of the best things that I think about, about it, is they've all got character to them. I don't need therapy, I just need my boat. <laughs> I like the, well, I feel the same way about the woods. We've got a vegan chili with hummus, rice and salad, basically. Instead of beef, there's sweet potato, there's beans, um, and then veg like carrot. And are you Buddhist? I mean, I see a lot of sort of uh, 
shrines and bits and bobs? Uh, I'm I'm not uh, I'm not a practicing Buddhist. I just really resonate with the the values and the the teachings that come with Buddhism. Inspiration to you rather than the code by which you live or something. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Right. Well, let's tuck into this before it gets cold. <laughs> too spicy yeah that's delightful well, how does the money work for you then like what are you are you on you're living full-time boat life and then how are you paying for these fajitas i work full-time um as a physio in the nhs really yeah so that that pays my wage essentially and then so you're full-time nhs and full-time boat life the, the furthest away i get is about maybe 20 30 minute drive as a junior physio you move around every six months to a different okay department. okay so i'm going to move to reading in April, yeah, and then I'm going to move the boat up to Reading. Is there a rub between this semi-nomadic life and then going into the NHS for work? I'd really want to eventually go part time. Yeah, I, I love working, but at the same time, I want to spend more time on the boat. Yeah, and have a bit more flexibility with moving it. I'll put the clip in here if I can find it. But a long time ago, when we were doing the van project, uh, Alfie and myself went into this woman's and her kids. Uh, what do you call it? It was like a lorry. That was converted, and she was living this alternative lifestyle. Actually, why am I telling you all this? I'll show you the clip. Oh, this is so cool. <laughs> do you think you're happier or, or less happy? I will, I can't imagine ever living in a house again. Wow. Personally. Really? And do you have do you have a job for work for money, or do you do all of it in exchange? No, no, I have a job. For money. Oh, what kind yes, of thing I is it? Do. I'm a I'm a doctor actually. I'm a hospital doctor. No way. Yeah. No. So I didn't do it out of financial necessity, which some people do, but I didn't. And that's actually what you're, um, that's what you're describing. It's kind of a mixture of the two, which is very cool. So is it working? Like, are you saving the money? I guess that's one of the motivators was to save money. Possibly, yeah. I bought the boat for 20 grand mm -hmm. and took out a 15 grand loan. I'm already six months in and have paid off a third of that. Wow. Um, and so essentially in a year's time, I'm looking to be mortgage and debt free. What will the boat be worth then? So it should be worth still at least 20 grand. Oh, really? They hold yeah. their value? They do. Okay. So, If not more. Do you have to pass any tests in order to be allowed to live out here? Not at all. I took a, a lesson out of choice. Before yeah. I moved it. <laughs> so that you didn't ruin your 20 grand asset. Exactly. And the really important question, can I have another fajita? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Are we going to try and do a, a lock? Yeah, definitely. Okay, that's what I want to do. I want to try a lock and see how that goes. There's one just up around the corner, so okay. we'll be there in five minutes, hopefully. <laughs> Yeah, we're just chatting about it and in a way I sort of see this as a 20 grand experiential savings plan that basically by the time you're 25 you're gonna have had two years life experience living on a boat uh, meeting people learning stuff figuring life out plus you'll have a t hopefully a 20 30 grand asset which may have a, may have gone up in value if you look after it well and then you can decide what to do you may have had a windfall then you can buy a house and keep the boat you don't might never go to a house or you might sell the boat and use that deposit to buy a house yeah i'm not earning a packet but yeah. it's enough to pay the loan off and, and gradually get on on my own two feet basically have some fun and learn some stuff along the way yeah make sure. some youtube videos exactly <laughs> all right let's get this show on the road okay. Got the steering rudder, yep. the mega throttle that goes three miles an hour. Essentially, yeah, it goes the opposite way to okay. the direction you push. So if you push left. it left, then yeah. we go right. The boat's going to come right. Cheers. Yeah, you can take us. Uh oh. Uh oh. Can you guys see the bridge? I'll take over there. Give me the, give me the knowledge. Push I the push tiller to the right. out towards me. And is that enough now, do you think? Yeah. And then you can push the throttle just a little bit further, further forwards. I think we're doing all right. This is genuinely scary. Oh, crap, crap, crap. 
Let's, right. let's find my side. Oh crap. Crap. No, I'm genuinely f***ing it. You're nailing it. Okay. I, I would not have liked to have been in one of the wide big berthas through there. That was actually genuinely scary. <laughs> oh. I didn't think they would be scary, but it really was. I've had problems with boats in the past. Uh, if I want to go right, uh, that's it towards you. It's all good. Uh, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Basically, it all makes sense. The left, right, right, left thing until you get under pressure and then your brain just shuts down and you don't know which way is which yeah, anymore. Massively, massively. Our first lock. So we're going to try and land here. How it all came to be was a miracle. We can unfold. And when I get it off any time, a wingless. For people who haven't seen a lock before, is this because we're essentially going uphill? Correct, yeah. And the water, because you're going uphill, why, why, why does that matter though? So the lock uh, canals don't flow, they're, they're man made. So essentially, we need to slowly be able to go up and down, especially because we're going in both directions as well, because they would take cargo from one place to the other and come back. <laughs> Well tight, like a foot away. Does it matter if we can? Pretending to open the gate because I forgot to film it the first time. Ugh. He is an absolute Slytherin. Good work, sir. What well a Martha. And that is our first lock, or my first lock. Nice to actually see the canal system. Good work, mate. Good work. Guys, check out this gorgeous, gorgeous blue sky. It has turned out into an absolutely stunning day. Uh, disturbingly warm it's been for end of February, but nevertheless, it is absolutely gorgeous. And it, it wasn't looking that way this morning, was it? We're gonna have a little stroll back to the car, but um, just say, Stephen, thanks very much for having me, very mate. You're welcome, mate. Really appreciate Thank you. it. It's been great to have you on board. And as we were just talking about, it is great to see someone who's just learned about it, given it a go, got a good plan, got a beautiful boat, found good community. So, yeah, respect, mate. Well done. <laughs>